When a skilled young woman was declared dead after a horrible accident, the wolf she had previously helped refused to leave her side. When the village doctor examined her to figure out why, he rushed to call the police. Tao Shan was a park ranger in the Xinjiang region in China. She had worked for the National Park Service for the last five years and was in love with her job. Most of her days were spent cleaning camping sites, patrolling different areas, and surveying water levels. She always had dirt on her shoes, and for Tao, that was the biggest sign of happiness. Since she was a little girl, she had been initiated into hiking by her parents. The local woods were where they would spend most of their vacations as a family, and Tao had formed her best memories there. She felt safe surrounded by nature and never imagined that anything dangerous could ever happen there. But all that was about to change. Summer was coming to an end, and the end of the tourist season meant more free time to hike in the park on her own. One day, Tao took a path to the south to walk a track that looped around the edge of the forest. She was so used to being by herself that she had never thought that one day she might have some unwanted company. The young woman had been walking for half an hour when she felt a presence behind her. But every time she turned her head, no one was in sight. The feeling grew stronger, and she could feel someone behind her back. Tao knew that a hundred meters ahead, she would be entering a vast clearing. Whatever was on her heels, there would be no place to hide once in this part of the park. She jogged through the clearing and reached the edge of the forest. There, she found a big boulder and squatted behind it, waiting. Tao overheard a branch creaking before she caught sight of a furry head poking out of the shade. Her follower was a wolf. Tao felt amazed and scared at the same time. She stayed in place and tried to keep her cool. If the wolf had wanted to hurt her, it would have done so by now. It didn't seem to be on a hunt, and it was alone. This was unusual behavior for an animal normally attached to a pack. There was something intriguing about the situation. For some reason, she felt that there was nothing to fear and decided to keep walking. Tao wanted to see if the wolf would keep following her. To her surprise, it did, and it was getting increasingly closer. It wasn't hiding anymore and seemed to be acting more like a dog than a dangerous predator. As the wolf started walking by her side, trust between them started growing, and Tao got more and more familiar with it. It only took a few minutes of proximity to realize that the wolf was injured. One of its forelegs had an open wound. Despite the animal's best effort to match Tao's pace, it was showing signs of weakness. The park ranger stopped and sat down on the path. She waited for the wolf to settle down next to her before getting her first aid kit from her backpack. She didn't want to startle her new companion, so she made sure to move gently but without any hesitation. The last thing she wanted was for the wolf to doubt her intent and run away. Once all of her gear was at hand, Tao cleaned the wound. The wolf didn't make a move. It had decided to trust this woman and remained calm throughout the whole dressing. It showed more patience than she had anticipated, and a warm feeling of mutual respect grew in her. Once the wolf's bandage was secured, Tao expected it to leave her and go searching for its pack. Instead, her furry friend stuck with her for another hour. It didn't seem to want to leave her side at all, so they walked together to the highest point of the path. From there, Tao could see where she had left her car when she had started her hike earlier this morning. It was a peaceful sight for her to consider, especially with the wolf by her side. What an adventure this day had been. Little did she know, it was far from over, and it would end in tragedy. Tao was lost in her daydreaming when a loud noise came from the road. It sounded like someone was trying to get attention. The young woman wasn't working that day, but it was still her duty to investigate if anything suspicious was to happen in the natural park. She had a responsibility and would not walk away from it. She waited for the car horn to go off again and rushed to make her way in the right direction. After ten minutes of brisk walking, she arrived at an opening where she could see three men in the distance. One was in a car, while two others were patrolling the edge of a hill atop a ditch. The car horn was still blaring, 
but it took Tao another ten minutes to reach the road. The situation was awfully suspicious, and she had questions as to why the three of them would make such a racket in a protected area. When Tao finally reached the group, the three men looked petrified at the sight of her and huddled together behind their car. The ranger stopped in her tracks, confused before realizing that the wolf was still with her. It took a few minutes to reassure everyone and explain that the wolf wasn't a danger. When Tao finally got the story from the men, they described that a second car had been stuck in the mud for hours, and despite their best attempts, the first car was unable to tow it out. They were desperately waiting for someone with a bigger car to drive by and help them out. Tao took matters into her own hands, running to get her car and help the group out. The wolf chose to go back to the woods, but she didn't have time for goodbyes. Those people were counting on her, and she wasn't about to let them down. However, it seemed that helping them was not in her cards. As soon as Tao started driving towards the ditch, a truck came out of nowhere and slammed into a side door, sending her car crashing into a tree. When the dust settled and the men approached the car, they knew better than to move Tao's body. That could have been more damaging and even fatal to her. Instead, they called 911 and waited for a paramedic to rush her to the nearest village, which happened to be Tao's hometown. It was a poor and rural area. Unfortunately, on that day, the doctor was already out of town. Word of Tao's accident spread quickly through the village, and her family came to be by her side. People with experience tried to revive her, but there was no sign of life. After a few hours, her parents declared her dead. Their beautiful girl had left forever, and there was nothing they could do to bring her back. But maybe somebody else could. The next day, funeral arrangements were made, and Tao's body was put in a coffin. She was about to be buried when a strange figure appeared at the edge of the village. Kids who were playing around saw it and ran off to their homes, screaming. Incredibly, it was the wolf. It had tracked Tao's scent after the accident and had found her body in the coffin. The three men who helped Tao explained how the wolf had been accompanying her. The wolf walked slowly towards the congregation, and while everybody scrambled to hide from it, it started scratching the coffin. Someone tried to shoo it away, but the wolf suddenly got angry and started snarling, refusing to leave Tao's side. No one could understand what was happening. At this time, the doctor finally came back to the village. He had heard the news in the night and had hurried back as fast as he could. When he saw the wolf scratching the coffin, he opened it to check Tao's body. As soon as he started examining her, he went pale and immediately grabbed his phone to call the police. There had been a terrible mistake. When the doctor had checked Tao's vitals, he realized that she was still alive. Her heartbeat was so weak that it was barely recognizable, and an injury in her back was compressing her lungs, making her breathing impossible to see. But the doctor was sure she was alive. Tao was immediately transferred to the nearest hospital in an ambulance, where the doctors helped her wake up from her coma. Tao's delight was immeasurable when she came home. Her furry friend was waiting for her, the wolf that she had saved. The wolf had been adopted by the town, who wanted to thank him for saving Tao's life. The relationship between humans is so cruel that sometimes it is easy to think that some animals are more human than people. Humans are by no means the only emotional animals in nature. Animals may not have as rich a language as humans, but they have the same sincere emotions as humans. The stories we will tell today will prove that animals are even more kind and fair to people than some people are to their own kind. Rowan has been a hunter all his life. Many years ago, he built a small house in the depths of the tiger forest. He would go there to hunt almost every weekend. By the way, he would stay away from the hustle and bustle of the city and take a rest in the quiet forest. He's 70 this year, he's not as strong as he used to be, but he's still strong enough for an old man to go to his forest home and glide through the forest for miles. This time, he planned to stay there for a week or so, so he brought a lot of food, and after packing everything, he set off. It's so windy here that Rowan can barely stand upright. He went on dejectedly and wishing he could make it home before dark and light the stove, before dark he was finally home, 
and as he approached the house he noticed animal tracks in the snow, although the animals usually not this close to one's home. But after he went out, he saw a little wolf cub on the porch, where it lay peacefully asleep, woke up at the sound of the man's footsteps, and rushed into the forest. Rowan was very sympathetic to the animal, so after he lit the stove in the house, he took some food outside to feed the wolf cub, which he saw approaching a tree not far from the house, for to avoid scaring the animals away again, Rowan placed the food on an old tree stump at a safe distance. Hunger got the better of him. Although he was scared, the wolf cub approached the food and started eating. When he was full, the little animal turned and walked into the forest. In the evening, Rowan heard rustling on the porch, and when he opened the door, he saw today's little wolf, the little gray friend, enter the house timidly, and curled up next to the stove. The kind man did not drive it out, but gave it a chance to warm and rest here. The next morning, the wolf cub returned to the forest. However, every night since then it has returned to this man's home, sleeping peacefully by the stove. Rowan stayed here for a week, and it was time for him to go back to the city, but he decided to leave enough food for the little wolf. After returning to the city, Rowan fell ill, and he could not return to the house in the forest for a short time. Months passed, and as soon as he had fully recovered, the first thing he did was to go back into the forest, because he wanted to see the puppy, and he wanted to know how he was doing. But once there he could not find it, but all the food was eaten, but there was no trace of the beast in the room, and at night Rowan was alone in the house thinking of the little wolf. He heard a rustling on the porch, could it be him? He opened the door, but to his surprise, he didn't recognize the people at the door at all. He was amazed to see several people who, judging by the clothes they were wearing, escaped from prison and were now seeking shelter, forced their way into the house and began to rummage through all the closets and cabinets, they looked for clothes and food, completely ignoring the existence of the old man. At Rowan's protest, one of the men took out a knife and started attacking him. No one could have predicted what would happen next, the door was suddenly pushed open, and a young wolf rushed towards Rowan's attacker. So the man managed to stab the wolf with his knife, which caused the wolf to howl and run away, but then a gigantic she-wolf, presumably the pup's mother, appeared and subdued her attacker in a second. Rowan ran outside to his pup, who was lying in the snow, and he pulled it to him, but it was too late, the little wolf's stiff body was crumbling in his arms, and he didn't seem to have any signs of life. Rowan sat on the ground, holding the wolf who saved him and crying for a long time. The she-wolf remained in the house, and she did not allow the other escapees to leave until Rowan called the police. The police came, and they took the nasty criminals away. After that, Rowan was left alone in this small house full of their memories, and he cried bitterly. He remembered the first time he saw the gray pup, the little pup sleeping on his porch, and he cried in pain. He had never imagined that an animal would touch and sadden him so much, that it had sacrificed itself to save his life, like those heroic humans. On a snowy day in Siberia, a local resident decides to go outside, which may sound easy to most of us, but he hits a shocking obstacle, and his entire day is turned upside down. Alexei was about to go out to the yard outside, but when he opened the door, he found that it was stuck. There seemed to be something behind the door that prevented Alexei from leaving. This man was very strange, and got out from the crack of the door. Also, he heard some strange noises. Alexei's neighbor, Gina, explained that it sounded like a low growl from an animal. Suddenly he felt that he had to see what was stopping him from going out, and saw a full-grown Siberian tiger lying on the front porch, she was lying on the ground, looking exhausted. Alexei hurried back to the house and called the Ministry of Natural Resources. They sent a team to catch the tiger and inspect it, unfortunately the road was icy and it took hours for the rescue team to reach the scene. Alexei himself decided to wait in the house until the tiger left his house, so that he would not have to hide anymore. Immediately after the rescue team arrived, the tiger was anesthetized and brought back to their facility to get a better look at her. In addition to being exhausted, the big cat is facing some major health issues and is now missing 10 front teeth and has gum infections that make it hard for her to eat, which is why she is so tired. 
Her paramedic speculated that she must have suddenly appeared at Alexei's door. It is very difficult for a tiger to fully recover. In Siberia, where there are only 500 tigers left, full recovery is important not only for itself but for the species as a whole, as the female tiger plays a vital role in maintaining the population. The Animal Rescue Center was established at the initiative of Russian President Vladimir Putin to study and protect the Siberian tiger population. It's a pity that she didn't allow people to come close when she came. She used her claws to protect herself and made up for the missing teeth. At first, the tiger seemed to recover, and she started eating meat containing antibiotics. Although she was too sick to eat solid food, medical staff hoped that this would be the beginning of a steady recovery, but the results were disappointing. Fortunately, its population is recovering, giving scientists high hopes for the future. Physically, tigers and humans may be different, but we are able to connect through love and compassion.